Good evening and welcome to Charter House Chapel. This is our service of evening prayer, Vespers, and I invite you to join in our community online, on TV, or also you are invited to come to our chapel for in-person Vespers, and you're very, very welcome. Today, we celebrate Jesus' cross and we hear about his, his cross in Mark chapter 8. So our theme is taking up our cross and following Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil Take up our cross and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today, the psalm appointed is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of the Creator, and the firmament proclaims the handiwork of love. Day to day, speech pours forth, and night to night, knowledge is revealed. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet does their music resound through all the earth, and their words echo to the end of the world. In the heavens a tent for the sun is set, which is like a bridegroom on their wedding night, as they sing love's song and celebrate the dance of life. Its rising is an eternity, and its circuit to infinity. Nothing is hid from the sunlight. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of love is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of love are right, rejoicing the heart. The authority of love is pure, enlightening the eyes. The spirit of love is glorious, enduring forever. The rights of love are true, awakening compassion. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them are the loving guided. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own weaknesses? Cleanse me, O love, from all my hidden faults. Keep me from boldly acting in error. Let my fears and illusions not have dominion over me. Then shall I become a beneficial presence and fully surrender to your love. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find favor in your heart, O oh my beloved, my strength and my joy. Let us pray. Faithful God, you sent your incarnate word as the sun of justice to shine upon all the world. Open our eyes to see your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, 
Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends the Gospel reading. Friends, today we're very close to the 20th anniversary of 9-11. The very next day after 9-11, my family and I took our firstborn daughter to Chicago to start college. Remember those days? We believed that another attack could come in any of our major cities, including Chicago. We all tried to make plans to protect our children, but our daughter was leaving home for the first time. We couldn't protect her. Watching her walk away was one of those painful moments in the life of a parent. How did you cope? that September 20 years ago. What was going on in your life? I, for myself, went so far to make plans with a pastor on Chicago's west side where Catherine could go on foot if Chicago was bombed. Was that suffering for the sake of Jesus? Or was it just the pain of war, destruction, and the fear that we humans visit upon one another. Was I just a mother afraid for her daughter? And yet, one pain cannot be separated out from another in our lives. By a certain point in our lives, everything we do is for Jesus, or not. It's about ourselves trying to do it our way. Seeing those buildings collapse on 9-11 brought forth for me my own experience of being in a building that collapsed. The Hyatt Hotel disaster in Kansas City in 1981. Lying in the rubble with a broken back there, I heard the moans of 114 people calling out to God as they died around me. There in that moment, God gave me a vision of Jesus on the cross. There he was. I saw him. And seeing him did not stop the dying. It didn't stop the moaning. It didn't stop the pain. But he was there. And that was enough. Beloved people, speaking to you in time of pandemic now, when Jesus lays his cross on all of us who would follow, I can certainly say this, that when we do suffer, I believe that Jesus is there and his holy angels. They may come in the form of ordinary people who step onto the scene whether that be the rubble of a collapsed building or a clinic bedside or the chair where you sit. In our text today, Jesus points to the cross, his and ours. Yes, we would rather have a savior who is a winner and one who then makes us winners, but Jesus identifies with the lowest of the low. He identifies with the losers. Our Lord is down in the rubble with us. He will let himself be judged and condemned by the religious leaders, and he will 
allow himself to be mocked and tortured and executed as a criminal by the Romans. Jesus gives us the news that he expects his disciples to follow him on his path of suffering and death. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Taking up the cross does not mean taking responsibility for every bad thing that happens in our broken creation. We are not responsible for getting a serious illness or experiencing natural disasters. Jesus is not telling us to seek out suffering. He himself did not seek it, but he knew that that would be the result for him. No, instead we are responsible for how we respond to what happens. Jesus speaks of losing our lives for his sake and for the sake of the gospel. So taking up our cross means being willing to suffer the consequences of following Jesus. Let the cookie crumble however it crumbles. As we follow on his way, it is our honor to know everyday people who have so absorbed this essence of Jesus, this pattern of following him, that in the very critical moment, they know what to do. Think of Arlen D. Williams, Jr., the passenger aboard Air Florida Flight 90 on January 13, 1982, which after takeoff crashed into Washington's 14th Street Bridge and then into the icy Potomac River. Fighting off a lifelong fear of water, clinging to twisted wreckage, he handed over to the five other survivors, one life vest after another. And when all but Williams had been pulled ashore, the helicopter returned to the site to save him, but he was gone. Most of us may never have to go there, but we do know the way. At Charter House, we walk this path day by day together in his fellowship. Jesus is in the lead, and he has shown us the way. Today with his cross, our Lord calls us to decide what our life is all about. Remember, a person in Jesus' culture in the first century thought world was totally divine, defined by those to whom she or he belonged, by their family or their kinship, their household. And Jesus calls us to choose a new understanding of who we are. Followers of Jesus join a community whose bottom line is sticking with Jesus. With Jesus as Lord, we enter a new family made up of all of Jesus' followers. So self-denial is not self-annihilation. It is just a complete redefinition of who we are. And it's not over till it's over, people of God. By God's grace, after the Hyatt, I married, carried, and gave birth to three babies, continued serving as a pastor for 40 years. I was at the Hyatt with my sister, who miraculously survived and follows Jesus to this day. We define ourselves by who it is that we follow. It is he who gives us life, and it is he who keeps our life. When we follow Jesus, he becomes the captain of our destiny. He becomes our all in all. And then we're not alone in following our, in carrying our cross. He has made our lives into lives of joy 
and gratitude. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, including people like Arlen D. Williams, Jr. He died so that others could live. He didn't have to think about it. He didn't have to even hear a sermon about it. All he had to do was follow Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray the prayers of evening, ending with our Lord's Prayer, saying the word sins and sin. Let us pray. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely, for you are our help, and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for Vespers. I invite you now to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>